MVP, it's his first ring on Lombardi Blink, and he's gonna sing to LA, and he's gonna play. He the cats away with his family. He's chugging, getting crunk, and, and he reads them books on a Jimmy. Gonna black out with his back out, and when he spikes throws, it's a TD. He don't sleep, so don't creep on him with no sneaky pick. Hey, y'all, big skin drops the pounds when he spikes the ball. I don't find. Playmaker, throwing haymaker, his boy's goody. And you know we learned it from the hoodie. He's number 87. Gonna take you to heaven. Bye, cause Gronk is selling. Cause late night Gronk's gonna give it to you. Cause late night Gronk's gonna give it to you. Cause late night Gronk's gonna give it to you. He's a beast, it's three and these. The boxer starts right now. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. Need a long and appropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Power College for Box School. Hello and welcome to the Box Tour. I'm Brock in Los Angeles, joined by the Danettes in Milford, Connecticut. Uh, guys, there was a lot of talk about cheating and breaking the rules today. <laughs> late night grunk's gonna give it to you late night. Um, Polly, with this latest story relating to uh, younger kids, do you tell Dan to be cautious about his commentary? No, not really. I was actually had to push him towards this topic a little bit. I didn't think he was too into it early in the morning, and I really liked it because all of us have either played grade school sports at some level, Ahead. Now we have kids who play grade school sports. These stories jump, and whether you like them or not, they're fantastic sports radio stories because anytime kids and sports and adults are mixed in together, everyone has an opinion. Even McLovin's like, we're making way too much of this topic, but you were engaged and upset. You were emotional about it, and so that means it's working. I didn't necessarily say we were making way too much of it. I just thought that the guests we had on sound like his, there was a real era of sorrow uh, which I didn't get, and I don't think I got the local angle. I'm like, and there, you know, the headlines were very like, this is heartbreaking. Yeah, it is heartbreaking, but he really sounded like someone just shot his dog. Well, yeah, story. again, I, I rarely try to inject where I came from, but this was yeah. specific. I'm from the south side. I was born on 104th Street, and I grew up in the south suburbs mostly, and this is a poor area. Beyond poor, it's a dangerous, deadly area where these kids grew up, mm. and uh, the suburbs are quite a bit nicer, but they're still pretty rough. And so this story is about the South Side of Chicago, which has had nothing good happen yeah, in yeah, and decades. I, and I was surprised. Dan's initial thought, I think he was looking at more of like, you know, do enough people nationwide right now care about the Little League World Series? And then once you spoke with them and we talked about it as a group, it's this goes far beyond whether you care right. about the Little League World Series in general. This is about cheating and what people were getting away with. And adults taking advantage of kids for their own personal glory. There's, right. there's a dozen angles we didn't get to. Yeah, but I mean, the whole Little League World Series is adults taking advantage of kids for their own private angle. They make... I, you know, I said in the box, right. ESPN makes millions and millions, 76 million on the new contract. The kids don't get squat. And if you think this mm -hmm. is like, it's a short-term panacea to think that this is having some well, sure huge effect on society. But the fact that it was like the, you know, the World, World, World Series champions, it just, that just struck me like right before showtime for that to yeah, come I, over see, and say, like, 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 taking their trophies away. I, Every time a Little League World Series comes out, I, I view the whole topic with a, the Little League World Series with skepticism. Me and too. this confirms some of my skepticism. Yeah, but it, I think the kids enjoy it. It's like yeah. one time, you know, most kids don't get a national stage for playing sports. And this is the, they don't have this for football or basketball, really, for really well, little kids. Know, in my hometown that I grew up in, uh, we weren't like an official Little League sanctioned, uh, like. South Amboy? You know, yeah, South Amboy, New Jersey. So we were called the Lil Fellas. Because we couldn't be like little league scouts. Like, well, kinda. Ooh. And uh, um, by, by the way, knowing your area of New Jersey, is this a Goodfellas reference? Uh, well, okay, possibly. <laughs> and so, so they, was this like not recognized, or like what if someone got hurt? Would there be no yeah, insurance said, for these it's kids? Not, it's, not yeah. it's not an official thing. It's like an independent, the little scabs. local only thing. I don't know if uh, the if little league is unionized just mm -hmm. yet. If you can unionize eight year olds. Um, but if it were, I yeah. would be <laughs> pro union. Oh, they're all fellas. Um, but I was always so jealous of those kids. I'm like, man, like, why do the kids from Marlboro get to go play in like the state ch championships or whatever? Fancy fields. We and just, beautiful. I get to play, you know, Joe's Diner or whatever, you know, and, like sanitary fuel, <laughs> beat, progressive firehouse. Some bang. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, you said something after the show that I totally agree with. If you're one of those kids, you know what? Ignore this story. You won the World Series. Celebrate like you did. You know what? They had fun. I don't see why they should feel any shame in this at all. I've, no. I hope they don't. They should because they have no control of it. When you're yeah. 12 or 13, the adults tell you where to go, what to do, what to eat, what time to go to bed. Yeah. And they probably told these kids, hey, we're going to put this team together. We're going to be awesome. 
we're gonna be great. The kid's like, cool. Let me know when the ice cream yeah. is here. Right. Let me know when the balls yeah. are here so we can go to practice. Yeah. But, yeah. but like I said, that would totally bother me too. If like some of those kids, you know, didn't belong on that team, and like three of those kids were actually should have been on this team or two, and it would have been more evened out as far as these some of these great players, the superstar mm -hmm. team they put together, or maybe a couple of those kids should have been on my team, and somehow they finagled it so they could all just put together this fantastic team, even though they came from. What if your son was on a team and you had the feeling that whoa, that kid's not uh, not from this district, and you yeah, knew no. you had an. Yeah. Yeah. Would you self-report your own kids' team? Uh, I, I may want to try to do it anonymously and get the word out just out of honesty. It, it would bother me. I, yeah. I, I have a feeling that initially I would think it was really cool that he's on this fantastic team. You never team. brought those plates back that you stole. Yeah, when you, you took those plates. That <laughs> would you, yeah. would you bring the plates stealing, back? Would bring the kids back from the Little League World Series? It's, 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 already, it's too late already to bring the plates back. <laughs> it's it's never too late. That store's still open. But, but I'd like to think initially maybe I'd be excited he was on this superstar team, but then I'd be, if I had evidence that suggests that some of these kids Suggest. don't belong there, you know, I'd like yeah, to believe that I'd say, lie. hey, this is... When you say like to believe, that means there's no chance in hell you do <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I mean, we know you, Tyler. But just see how excited... I may be the same. I may be the same as you. you see how excited your kid is. Wow, we're beating everybody 30 to nothing. We're undefeated. We're going to the championship. Everyone cheats. We all know that. Uh, cheating all over sports and Dale Earnhardt actually dialed in today and talked about how NASCAR likes to push the limits. Basically we have a rule book and it's our job or the you know the crew and the crew chief's job to, to bend that rule book as hard as it'll as far as it'll go without breaking. You gotta to be competitive you have to use every you know thousandth of a second in every measurement that, that nascar allows and and when they allow tolerances you want to use the full amount of that tolerance when it comes to the body and aerodynamics and suspension and measurements you're getting every little bit that you can and you also try to look in, look for little you know loopholes or or look at the wordage in the rules themselves and try to figure out ways to find an advantage that's not necessarily against the rules it's just not a rule yet <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, Junior's got a good point that the entire NAS NASCAR is based on trying to make your car faster than the other guy, and but then there's rules that say you could only do this. Those things don't go together. You know, it's like saying, hey, why don't you just give everybody the same car? Why don't they just walk out there and hand these guys 43 of the same exact car and say, all right, who's the best driver? Because you couldn't do that. So uh, it, why wouldn't you do that? You kind of do that. Why wouldn't you do that? Because it, it would kill everyone else's job. There wouldn't be a crew chief. There wouldn't be. A, so you're a, making the sport unfair to provide employment. It would. It would. What? What? Why not have 43 of the same cars? Like we play with the same but footballs. The we case, play with the same like, basketballs. If um, if you don't want people to speed, why don't they just make cars only go 65 exactly. miles an hour? That's exactly. Exactly. Interesting idea. <laughs> and then okay, no more speeding. You well, well, yeah, but, 65. but, but the there. NASCAR it should be a test of driving, it's solely driving ability. Why is so much of it, and who whose team can create the fastest car? That's a, that's great for an eighth grade science fair with soapbox derbies, but this should be about mm -hmm. athleticism. We these are athletes, not mechanics. Yeah, but the, I, 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 I hear you're, you you're saying, but that they're athletes. Okay, NASCAR drivers. I'll are take athletes? that. I'll take the that. Yeah, they would be athletes if they all use the same car. You know, it's like I'm driving a 2009 Honda Accord, and Fritzy's got your brand new Jeep. What do you have? I have a Lexus. Yeah, I mean, he's going to beat me every time. I don't think he's going to beat me. I don't think so either. Well, there he's are a lot of variables a lot of, in a lot of racing. racing. Um, McLovin, let me go to you on this one. Uh, Dale Jr. Jr. tweeted out that DP show is quite possibly his favorite quite show. Possibly. Is that sort of a shot at Dan? No. First of all, that's just, you're you're taking in Dan's reading. Dan's mm. terrible at taking a compliment. That was a, 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 an awesome shout out. It's the most famous driver on earth saying like this. And Dan's like, oh, quite possibly. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Kind well, of maybe he's quite way. possibly my favorite driver. I'm like, well, that's nice of you to say. <laughs> I mean, Dan, come on, take a compliment. It's just typical DP. It wasn't a compliment at all. It's oh, like, well, come maybe on. I'm kind of on the fence. It's either like DP or Bob and Tom. It's so like, no, you'd man, rather, all right, you'd rather have nothing? Just be like, just say nothing? It would have been nice if he would have said unequivocally or something like that, or Hands without down. a doubt. But you know, he chose to leave a little. So little you would have rather had no notes saying, "Hey, no, it was I, nice I, being on no, the dance." Like, so you're like critiquing said, him for being vague. All I'm saying is, it would have been nice for him to be a little more definitive. On, you know, and I, I can totally relate to that. To, to, oh my But I don't gosh. think that was being on the fence. I, th I do think that that was a compliment. I just wish it would have been a little more he, with a strong. Quite possibly is sort of like saying top three. That's not bad. Not great. This guy does a lot of no, 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 no. This is this is quite possibly the greatest movie I've ever seen. Right. I, I walked out of Boyhood. So that's quite possibly the greatest movie I've ever seen. But it wasn't. That doesn't mean that. But no, you, no, you no, left that the door open it for no, it to it be something. It might be. No, right. if it if it was the greatest movie anyway. I've ever seen, you would have said that was the greatest movie. Right. I've You've ever left seen. a little. But no, no, no. no it means I want more time to think about it. Right, anyway, I'm just trying to. <laughs> that's really cool, Junior. He's been the best segment in television.
<laughs> Stick around, the guys may be going on the road sometime soon. Uh, we are back here on the box where now that football season is over, it's time to look past the NBA and baseball season right on to the NFL draft. And it was clear today that Polly was already in drafts of the draft mode. We should definitely yeah, do yeah. yeah, we should Probably. definitely do drafts of the draft on TV from Chicago. You are kissing live from I think that would be fantastic. <clears throat> There's a Buffalo Wild Wings. It's quick hands right There's a Buffalo Wild Wings near Wrigley. Do you think we could really do the show from Chicago, Dan, for drafts of the draft or what? That would be awesome. Um, depends on what kind of show. Like, okay, so would we do the TV show? I don't know. Would That's do what I'm saying. Show? What kind of show? We could do radio. A day off show? Why don't, no, let's, let's go to Rooftop at Wrigley and do it, uh, do the show right up top. Or, uh... Well, I'd, I'd have to see if we could have cameras up there. Do they have TV cameras in Chicago? They do. They do have TV cameras in Chicago. I've been there, yeah. Uh, and, I've, yeah, I think I've seen this, like, video, live video from there before. Um, but there are a lot of, like, we're having some fun, but there are a lot of logistics that go involved to doing like a TV, radio, broadcast, simulcast, whatever we're calling it these days. Uh, that being said, Drafts at the Draft is, you know, a, a, a tradition at this point. It's got to be four years now that we've done it. Celebrities have attended? Yeah, yeah, including Clinton Portis, who's been there, I think, a couple of Chrissy, three out of four years. Chrissy Teigen, John Chrissy Legend. Chrissy John Legend, who were, I think... That first year was a little slow. It was a wild scene, though, when uh, they showed it up. It was a wild scene when they showed up. <laughs> um, but now every well, year it's Portis been building and building. Yeah, yeah, got the momentum. But, uh, you know, in all seriousness, we should definitely go to the draft this year. Chicago, it's an it's easy flight. We set up a nice, simple thing right at the Roosevelt, uh, where, where the university, where they're having the draft. I'm sure the Rich Eisen show is going. It would be nice to have both shows there, get some draftees on, get some NFL people on, yeah. enjoy some time in Chicago with our fans there, and... We've got two months to get it to done. I'm sure it'll be no problem. Go see the Cubs. Yeah, box score Cubs. from Chicago. I'm, I'm liking that. Fritzy, what's one of the craziest Not locations that. you have done uh, the show from? Uh, I don't know if there's anything been that crazy. You, you I remember one to... time we did uh, the <clears throat> radio show from the Texas State Fair. Okay. And we were outside at like a some just like a normal like card table, you know, whatever like radio does. But we were facing the sun for the entire wow. like four hours that yeah. we were there. And like the glare, we spent like the whole day sort of like this, like just trying to get any type of shade or cover from it. Yeah, and I, and I don't that know. That was pretty awful. Yeah, I don't know if I'd call it crazy, but um, you know, well, when the Hooters girls showed up, it made it a little extra crazy. But South Beach, I just look back on that and just how cool it was that, that we were set up like right there uh, on the beach as the celebrities and athletes were coming on. I thought that was pretty cool. Rarely do most people in this uh, line of work get to take a couple steps away from their uh, computers or their laptops or their desks, and you're like literally right there on the sand and recreating. Joe Montana, Dwight Clark catches right there uh, on the beach. So that was uh, that was pretty awesome. Less crazy, just more uh, more of a very cool. Rock back in uh, I think summer of '02, my first year on the show, or second year we did this show. Dan used to have a celebrity golf tournament in Dayton, Ohio, and it was 105 degrees, and we're under a little tent right outside a golf course in Ohio, and it was so hot that we were not on TV back then. So myself, Dan Patrick, and uh, Rob Dibble, we were sitting wearing shorts, no shirts on. And we had guests on, and the, sh the guests were taking their shirts off because they're sitting in this little hot area. Mm. And all of a sudden, uh, George Gervin comes up, the Ice Man, and he's wearing black on black on black with black glasses, long sleeve, Ugh. not a not a drop of sweat on the man. He walks in, and Dan's like, he goes, "You got to be kidding me!" He goes, "I'm the Ice Man. Ice Man, don't sweat." <laughs> Ice Man, don't. and he wasn't sweating. And everyone else would look like a schwitz. It's just down to your ankles. <laughs> Paulie, Dan seems pretty hot on getting himself this uh, mobile man cave. Who's on the case to move this forward? Uh, I have no idea, but I, I wish it him all the best. Idea. Um, Dan always wants the biggest, the shiniest thing, but you know, I, I thought we had a mobile van cave. I, I think it's just missing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, where I'm, I'm almost thing? sure we had one. That the, the... Remember, like we got that for the sole purpose of doing things like uh, drafts. Yes, yeah. we, we had a mobile van. One cave of the guys in the back drove off to get. I think he went to Carl's Jr. and just never came back. Yeah, so, <laughs> just uh, left it there. I think in lieu of uh, getting a uh, half a million dollar RV, we could get a couple tables and do the show at, at the draft. I think this is the kind of thing we should be working out on the box for, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that'll move it forward. Uh, stay with us. We will see if the back row can finally win a Know Your Row this year. Welcome back to the box score. Being superstitious is a common trait. I mean, I have my superstitions. I know the Danettes have theirs. We asked them about their biggest superstitions. Let's find out what they said as we play. No! Your! Row! 
front row to you. Seton, what is Polly's biggest superstition? Uh, <laughs> what you got to go to me first for? I'm sorry. Um, Take a guess, because I don't even know it. Jeepers Creepers. Paul's biggest superstition. Uh, he will not walk under a ladder. Oh, mm. That's, what That's I was a good say. guess. <laughs> uh, will he not walk under a ladder? I would say that my biggest superstition is putting my left shoe on and my right shoe on. I always do that, but I'm not going to answer that for this contest because Seton will never guess that. I'm going to say having the remote for DirecTV at a flush 90 degree level against the uh, instant replay machine during the show. Yeah. Which is less of a superstition is more just an OCD nutty quirk. Mm. Um, yeah, see, that's why I didn't go there. That being said, like, uh, you were correct. I don't walk under ladders if I don't have to. I just don't think it adds anything to your life to walk under a ladder when it's open. That's absolutely right. Uh, you get a hammer on your head. Uh, back row, it's your turn, McLovin. What is Todd Fritz's biggest superstition? This is going to be... Underwear? Can I say something <laughs> mean? <laughs> no, but if you, if you go, like, neuroses, yeah, you'd have... I'm going to say something problem. mean. Because you're on the Nutrisys and Night Out, you already, like, you're looking really great. So this is the <laughs> mixture. I'm going to say Todd doesn't walk under ladders because often he can't fit under the meter. Wow. <laughs> what? Is wow. he too fat to what? fit under a ladder? <laughs> My biggest wow. superstition is... Broncos related when I'm watching my favorite team in a sporting event I've got to wear a certain type of jersey and Zubaz pants and anything and everything for the Broncos for example I've got to have as many orange and blue things things with horses and logos on it So that's by far my biggest superstition if they're gonna win I need to be in my Broncos gear Yeah, me time yeah, I should have Todd. That's yeah, I'm a little me, disappointed. Dude. That's on me. It was too, too much of a rush. <laughs> that's like I didn't think of that as a superstition. That's like real life yeah, for you. That is you real know? life. That's not a superstition. Right. At it, all. it would have been a lot easier if you would have said, you know, pick a you know a neurotic thing or obsessive compulsive behavior. They'd have a, about a, a list yeah. of a thousand things. But um, yeah, I like to, especially for when it's playoff time. I like to have my little knickknacks and orange and blue things and jerseys and horses and caps. And it has uh, has only worked two times uh, against the Packers and Falcons. The other times did not work out. So that being well. said. We wouldn't you change it around? And well, not do something I'll, I'll that fails almost every time? a little bit, but uh, I ultimately I feel like I will somehow do you do change better, the like, outcome. They play better when the horse head isn't on my head or like, well, last time. That oh, yeah. No, I, I, like, I've, I missed, left it on I, I've missed parts of games because all of a sudden I left the room and they were doing better. Mm. And I'm like asking, you know, Jen or one of the kids to try to do play by play and let me know what's happening because by going into another part of the house, all of a sudden they were turning it around. Right. But uh, sure, yeah, I, I tried that against the 49ers right. and Giants and Redskins and did not Any more toilet well paper. Front row, back to you. Polly, what's <laughs> Seton's biggest superstition? I, I couldn't have less of an idea. I don't even have a guess. Oh, man. I was going to say wearing a, a series of plaid flannel shirts in succession over and over and over <laughs> as a, more of a comfort thing. I don't think that's the right answer, but I'm going to go with because it seems like something, it, it makes him feel good about himself. It's, it's relaxing. He's got a nice routine going. Wearing a, re, uh, a, a five to seven flannel shirts over and over. Is and over. it incessant plaid wearing? I always think twice <laughs> uh, before I kill a spider. So I think you're supposed to get like a bunch of bad luck if you kill a spider, isn't that right? Isn't that one of those? Uh, I don't think you're supposed to kill spiders, and so because you get like seven years of bad luck or something. <laughs> I think that's breaking a mirror. I gotta tell you that uh, like comes as a shock to me. I, I, you could have given me, you could have told me I could have five hundred million dollars if I could have gotten that question right, and I would have gotten it wrong. Brock, here. I must have just like stepped on a spider or something, and been like, oh crap, I'm gonna get bad luck now. Yeah, Brock, maybe next time on this game, you should ask us to guess what we guessed, yeah. and still we would get those wrong. Right. I'll tell you, there's a black widow on my arm. I'm like, kill it. They're like, she's like, no. Whatever, dude. All dude, right, uh, we'll die. give everyone a guess of this one. Uh, what is uh, McLovin's biggest superstition? Okay. Uh, I, I, no, I was initially going to say he doesn't want anyone stepping over him because it would stunt his growth, but he's plenty tall, so it couldn't be that. I'm going to say that he l likes to leave a room with his uh, right foot forward. He's got to be. He's got. He's got to walk out with his. He right usually foot. goes pelvis first. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be his right. Right forward. Right, 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 his first step out of any room would be right his right foot. All right. What is it? Right foot first. Wait. Oh, wait. Oh, hold hold on, on a second. Go wait. No. Wait. Go ahead. Go ahead. I need to eat almonds during the show for good luck. Uh, I feel like it's going to be something really Ooh. snooty. Uh, like, 
I only listen to, uh, like, every day before I have to listen to Bach before I come mm. into work or Ooh. Chopin or something like that. It's going to be something really snooty. So. That's right. Well, you got a guess? Uh, man, I would like that. I, I would say something, yes. I'm going to go with you. It's going to be some type of elitist jab at the rest of the room and not an actual superstition. <laughs> McLovin, do you have a guess? <laughs> I have no idea. I literally don't have the I, slightest idea. I'm so curious idea. to see what you say here. Um, so is he. I, I don't know. I really have no idea. Right, well, maybe it's what... listening to Bach before the yeah, show. Yeah, maybe it's Bach. Let's find out. Wow. Oh, my biggest superstition is don't walk underneath a ladder. I tend not to use ladders in general either. <laughs> Why reinvent the wheel? Why reinvent the wheel? Uh, it was the most oh, common man, guess that's so great. Great. <laughs> Just a whole full circle. Then, oh, man. Uh, no, nobody yeah, wins. Nobody, nobody wins, but fans of the box do I do. Uh, coming up next, a Seton O'Connor got himself an interesting proposition. We'll find out what it was. Uh, we are closing up shop here on the box score. You guys were talking about all aspects of the dating arena today, and then Seton shared this little tidbit about a proposition that he got at the mothership. Seton, didn't you See? have an anchor who said that uh, she'd like to have you dance for or something? That you'd be like a Chippendale dancer? Uh, what? I, yeah, at the mothership, I did have yeah. a, uh, a beautiful woman that uh, makes such remarks similar to But wait, wait, wait. How does that come up in conversation? I was actually leaving to uh, just explore and see what's out there. Uh, I gave my two weeks notice and was like, well, I'm just going to see what else is out there. Uh, if you know what I mean. And oh, she was doing the same thing. Here. Oh, so you were going to leave to come yeah. here. And she said, um, oh, she you're was like, be... oh, this is your last day. And I said, yeah. And she goes, what are you leaving here to be a Chippendale? Hmm. And I was like, excuse oh. me. And she was just like, no. Oh. And like, I was like, no, look at you. Like, well, well, as a matter of fact. Uh -huh. <clears throat> <laughs> Thunder down under. Well, that, that's quite uh, the invitation that uh, Seton got. Is that's a full green light, isn't I, I, it? For I, yeah, pretty much. As someone who is teetered on the uh, on the uh, line of uh, human resources, that uh, woman, <laughs> you know, got in her last shot, knowing I guess you were leaving, and I guess weren't going to be looking to uh, press any charges. Or thought, she felt that comfortable with you that you weren't going to be looking to, uh, you know, get her uh, in any kind of trouble. But that that's about as green a uh, light as it gets. That's a, a big compliment, and whatever. If Seton had any interest at all in uh, in that woman that uh, that said that, right. and, I, and I think he may have shared that with me, but I can't remember. That's a, that's a third curious. base lot coach going, come yeah, around. Did you consider come around. giving her a private dance? I could, well, simultaneously, I immediately considered a private dance or suing the company. And I was like, wow, which one should I do? Should I, <laughs> should I hmm, be better acquainted with this uh, young lady? Or should I just... Uh, but yeah, so ultimately, that's, that's, that's like, like pretty much that's like opening your jacket. Here's a question: no yeah. Does does Mrs. O'Connor know this story? If she doesn't, will she know it today? And if she knows it today, will she ask about it? She will demand I, to know who that is. I think she knows about this story. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I'm not. I mean, it's not like we were together. Right. So no, I, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like. You know, we know lots of stories about past things. Uh, I think I've told her about. This. Were you flattered, appalled, shocked? Do you remember what your your reaction, your immediate reaction was? I was to kind that? of shocked, and and then later on, after the fact, it was like, what, what did I do? <laughs> I, what's wrong with me? Yeah, I had a lot of that. Probably like mm. I don't know, maybe I guess eight years later. That would have been a very special opportunity for you. <laughs> Fritzy, what would it sound like <laughs> if uh, Linda Cohen asked uh, Seton to dance for? Oh, you're gonna get me in trouble here. Hey, Seton, I heard you're leaving. Must Maybe be uh, nice. we can uh, get to. Uh, he's asking me to do a Linda Cohen approach. I'm not going to yeah, take that. That's a hypothetical. I'm going to do Steve Summers. Well, Steve Summers, it sounds very similar. <laughs> yeah, I know, but just say. Schmoozing SPRTS. Seton, he's a hell of a guy. and Maybe we can hang out under the covers, schmoozing a little SPRTS into Limus in the morning. And Mike and the Angry Puppy already want. All right, who's on tomorrow, buddy? <laughs> uh, tomorrow's show will feature. Uh, who I know uh, Seton and Paul are in, in particular are very excited about, but we all are. Uh, Bill Burr, a great comedian, he's gonna join awesome. us in the studio. Jay Farrow, Saturday Night Live cast member as we get uh, closer to the big Sunday Night 40th anniversary uh, special on NBC. Jay Farrow's gonna uh, join us in studio, maybe some other surprises so as well. So Saturday Night Live is on Sunday night? Sunday night, hmm. three hour special, I believe, from 8 to 11 Eastern, uh, only on NBC. How about that? Thank you, and, uh, gentlemen. And Robert Smigel and thanks come for watching the, the box. Oh, Robert we will be back tomorrow hey, at 3 p.m. Eastern, right then. Audience Channel 239, the podcast is available on iTunes or at podcast1.com.
don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. Need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Hey, thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!